So this time we're looking at the inverse normal distribution. Now last time we were trying to find probabilities, this time we're going to know the probability and we're going to try to find the value of the variable. Uh, it's easier if I just show you an example. So here's our question. A maths test has a mean score of 62 and a standard deviation of 5. Determine the score that 23% of people score under. Alright, let's draw it. So there's our um, normal distribution. We have a mean score of 62 and the standard deviation there is 5. All right, so 5, 5, 5 over there. All right, it says determine the score that 23% of people score under. All right, so 23%, that's like about here. This shaded area here, we're gonna, that's going to be 0.23. And we need to know what this value is. I'll call that value C. We use C quite a bit for this kind of thing. All right, now from here, we should just be able to use our calculator to be able to determine this question. Before I do that though, I might just formalize this with some algebra. We're saying that the probability that the variable X is less than C is equal to 0 0.23. And then we're trying to find out what that C value is. So I'm just going to jump into calculate here. And then I'm going to go menu and statistics, distributions, and I'm going to go for inverse normal. Okay, and now I just need to type in exactly what my diagram says. Area 0 0.23, uh, mean of 62, and a standard deviation of 5. Okay, and I get an answer, inverse normal, 58.3. So, looking here, that looks about right. We definitely expect the number to be less than 62. And how do we interpret that? 58.3 is the score that 23% of people in the class score under. All right, so that's what that means. Now, you really want to draw a picture for every single style of these questions because it's not always this easy. Let me show you a couple using the standard normal distribution. All right, let's look at this one. Given a standard normal distribution, calculate, can't spell, calculate the value of C for the following. The probability that Z is greater than C equals 0 0.7. Now, drawing this picture, we get this thing here, it's a standard normal distribution, so that means a mean of 0 and uh, a standard deviation of 1. Z greater than C is equal to 0 0.7. If, it's, if greater than C, that's going to mean that we're shading into the right of wherever our C value is, and our C value would need to be on the left of that mean because more than half are there. Z greater than C. Alright, so this time we have a little bit of a problem here because our calculator doesn't shade in a, the inverse normal like that. Our calculator does this bit here. So we need to be a little bit clever with this. So, we can say that the probability that Z is greater than C equals 0 0.7. We can also say that the probability that z is less than c would be equal to 0 0.3 because c is our value here and if the probability that something is greater than is 0 0.7 then the probability that it's less than is 1 minus maybe I'll just put that in there so you can see that don't worry we'll get it finished 1 minus 0 0.7 which is 0.3. So now that I've drawn my picture and now that I've figured out that I need to calculate on the other side of it, I can just put it into statistics, distributions, inverse normal, and now I want an area of 0.3, mean of 0, standard deviation of 1, and my answer is C equals negative 0.524. Now this next question here, much more straightforward. The probability that Z is less than C is 0 0.4. So again, mean of 0 standard deviation of 1, I won't draw that in there. C, Z is less than C is 0 0.4. So that means that C must be right there. 
and that area must be 0 0.4. Now this time our calculator can handle that perfectly, so we just type it in menu, statistics, distributions, inverse normals, area is 0 0.4, and that number there is negative. 0.2533. Alright, let's do this last question here. I'm telling you, if you're not drawing pictures here, you are definitely going to get these questions wrong. So, let's take a look at it. The probability that Z is between negative C and C is equal to 0 0.8. Alright, so it's a standard normal again, so it has a mean of 0, and Z is between negative C and C. Alright, so these points are equidistant, negative C and C. And we know that the probability that something is between those two values is 0 0.8. Now we know that normal distributions are, um, we know that they're symmetrical. So the sum of this bit here and this bit here is 0 0.2, which means that this area here must be 0 0.1. And now we have enough information to be able to use our calculator. So, uh, let's write this in here. P, negative C is less than Z, which is less than C equals 0 0.8. Therefore, um, P, Z is less than negative C, must be equal to, and what must it be equal to? It must be equal to 0 0.1. Whenever we're doing these questions, we need to be able to convert them to a Z less than. You can see all three of these I've eventually converted to a Z less than because that's the only thing your calculator understands. All right, so now we go over to here. Menu, stats, distributions, inverse normals, and we have an area of 0 0.1, a mean of 0, a standard deviation of 1, and we get an answer of C equals negative 1.28155. All right, um, that, that is inverse normals uh, on your TI.